What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and share the video. Hit the join button and become a member. Why? Well, members get exclusive content. Hit the bell icon on my channel so that you will receive a notification every time that I drop a video. And you can go and check it out if you support me and support the channel. Let's get into it. Part two, my bad. I tried to get it to you guys yesterday and it's getting late right now. And the video will be taking its time loading up. I don't know what time y'all gonna get this video, <laughs> but it's, it's coming tonight. Well, where I left off at, I believe, I don't never rewatch my own videos, was that the homie, the young homie came out of the cell with his, with the back of his head leaking. Well, actually, before I say that, let me say this. Because people in the comments were saying, oh yeah, it, it was milk. It, it must have been milk. No, you guys are not paying attention. I said that milk was either in the cell with me at the time, or he came right after that. Or he was in the cell right before that and that left. I wasn't quite sure. But it was one of those two, because, uh, or one of those three, because Milk used to be in, this, in that same cell with me that I was in at that time. Milk responded in the comments and said, no, I was in the cell with you at the time that this incident happened with the young homie. So Milk was in the cell with me at the time. I also said that both of the people involved in the story have passed away. They're no longer here. Last I checked, Milk sent the comment, He's still around. So no, it was not Milk. It's not Tiny Moo and Baby Ray either, although I'm gonna to get to that story. Uh, so I don't want the Popo coming to arrest, coming to arrest Milk thinking he was involved in this. People in the comments talking about, oh yeah, it must have been Milk. No, it wasn't Milk. It was another young homie. Also, in the cell and in the cell with me, as I said, was the homie from Inglewood family. I couldn't think of his name at the time. Milk said, reminded me his name was Brock. Brock from Inglewood family. He passed away as well. Also, he, he, he resting in peace right now, bro. Brock was in the cell when this happened. Also, in the cell with the young homie was a young homie <clears throat> of mine from 11 dudes. This young homie was skinny, small, light skin. I'm not gonna say his name. Now, on the street, he used to pull the trigger. But that doesn't always translate in prison. In fact, it's rare that dudes are strong on the street where they put in work for their hood and all that and have a lot of respect and they come to prison and have that same respect or the county jail would have it. Oftentimes, dudes on the street that have big names or big reputations, they ain't shit inside the joint. They ain't nothing inside of prison. Again, it happens where it translates and it transfers their reputation on the street, transfers to prison because they're that strong, but not always. And so, and like in the case of Tiny Goofy, uh, he was strong on the street, young dude, also strong inside of the, jo inside of the joint. <clears throat> now, uh, so my young homie was in a cell with him. And he was a gunner on the street, but he was a young skinny dude, and he wasn't much of a, a fighter and all that in the county jail, even though some homies, or most of the homies in there are putting in a lot of work in the county jail. Now, he's in a cell with the young homie. The young homie in question. The young homie is about six foot one, and he's not a small, he's a big dude. And the young homie from 11 Dukes got into it with his celly one day, a blood. And he didn't really respond correctly. I heard the argument myself. I'm sure Milk did if he can recall this. And basically, the Damu asked him if he wanted to squabble, like, let's squabble up. And the homie didn't say nothing and all of that. So the young homie in question told the young homie, man, you better squabble, fool. What's up? Squabbling. So he made him fight. Okay, but he pretty much had to force him to fight. 
And he didn't like that. Because, again, the young homie is fighting everything and everybody, no matter what. So if you're not doing that same sort of thing, he has a problem with it. Really, the young homie is exhibiting sociopathic and psychopathic behavior here in the Los Angeles County Jail. But really, he was doing the same thing on the street. And so, when this incident transpired with him and a young homie, where he slammed his head, and the young homie is now on a stretcher, and he's in a, he goes out and he goes to the hospital. And the deputies tell me themselves personally a couple of days later that it's not looking good. And so this word also gets to the young homie that did this. He knows that the young homie is hanging on by a thread. He comes up with a plan. One day, not long after the young homie left the cell and went to the hospital, I hear another smack over there. Bam! I said, what the, what didn't happen now? I can tell it was body on body, fist on face, contact. I said, what happened? Knowing that now it's just the two homies over there and the Damu is still over there. So the young homie said, man, well, he said, man, the young homie, talking about the young homie, just hit me. He fired on the young homie out of nowhere. Now, he claimed that it was because he had to force him to fight the blood a couple of days earlier. But I found out that it was really because he had devised a plan that if the young homie passed away, then he had wrapped up his hand and fired on the homie and, and he's real light skinned and swelled up, swelled up his eye so that when they come to investigate some more, should the young homie pass away, it can make it seem like the young homie got into a fight with him and he was the one that unalived him because he, he has a black eye sitting in the cell and the homie wrapped up his hand so like there's nothing wrong with him. He came up with this whole plan, really, to transfer the blame onto the young homie. Now, I didn't know this at the time. All I know is that he didn't fight on the young homie, and I took umbrage to this. <clears throat> I was not happy, and I told the homie, man, don't put your hands on the young homie no more. Oh, you said tripping now because he's from 11 Deuce. Nah, bro, you tripping, man. You showing, displaying, exhibiting sociopathic behaviors. But to his credit, he didn't just, because the young homie was very small, but he didn't just put his hands on smaller people. He would fight anyone, and he did fight all of the opposition, regardless of their size. I do have to say that about him. I do have to give him credit for that. But the young homie was real thin, and this dude is like a bear. And so I didn't appreciate him putting his hands on the young homie over something that happened two or three days ago. And the young homie did fight the Damu. And you said it was over. You left it like that. You told the homie to, to squabble him to get out with him. He did. And that was supposed to be it. Now, all of a sudden, you fired on him to where I hear a loud smack over there. Days later, out of nowhere. What's up, bro? I'm basically saying, you know what? I'm going to have to get out with the young homie. He tripping over there. You know what I'm saying? I'm at the squabble him. And he didn't slam the young homie head upside the concrete. Now, they had a personal beef. And I didn't want to interject myself into their personal beef. I really didn't. And so whatever had happened over there, I didn't like it. And I made that known. But really, I had determined that I was going to stay out of that. Because it really got deep when he slammed his head against the concrete. But when he now fired on the homie, as well, I did have to intervene. I, I intervened when he slammed the homie's head against the concrete too, as I told you, and told him, put him on a bump, and eventually, man, call the police, regardless if you go down or whatever, call the police and get the homie some medical attention right now. Because if it was up to him, he'd just still been over there moaning. He didn't ever call for help, bro. I'm telling you, that's, what, that's how he was tripping. 
Now, well, about a week and a half, two weeks later, it took, it was about a couple of weeks, the young homie that was in the cell with him, whose head he slammed strongly and forcefully against the concrete, he passed away there in the hospital. He didn't make it, he died. And when he died, they did come and get the young homie from next door. And they took him to high power there in the Los Angeles County Jail. But that's it, they took him to high power because for whatever reason, they did suspect that he was the culprit. But they felt like apparently they had minute evidence to prove it because everyone in the cell was still sticking to their story that he had fallen tragically off of the bunk. And with there being no cameras or such inside of the cell, it's hard to dispute this. The DA is going to pick up the case and say what? That he had a fight with him or he had a fight with him. You don't know who did it. You don't know who had a fight with him, if there was a fight and what happened. Because they're all saying that he fell off the bump. How can you prove to a jury that that did not transpire and who did what in there? So the DA, to that point, had never picked up the case. They just put him in high power. And then the young homie went to prison. But just for the robberies that he was in there on. Again, he was in there for about 14 or 15 robberies. And he was facing 30 plus years. He eventually took a deal for about 16 years with about four years good time, four years credit. So he had about 12 years to go uh, with like 85%, which would have dropped down to 70% of whatever it dropped down to, he had about nine years left before he was to come home. Still a young man at 28, 29 years old. And when he went to prison, I thought perhaps they may file a case on him because the statute, statute of limitation for an unaliving, there is none. And so I Oftentimes, they file a case 10, 15, even 20, 30, and 40 years later. And I thought perhaps they were trying to build some sort of momentum, some sort of evidence. But again, it was going to be hard to prove anything. The homicidal police, uh, detectives, came and talked to me. They gave me some fake pass there in the Los Angeles County Jail and told me to report to some floor to see some medical or something. When I got there, I see people in suits. They figured, they told me ahead of time, the detectives want to talk to you, I'm going to refuse, which I would have. So I, it's the, I go inside of the door, it's detectives in suit. I, I go in there, I, it's one right here on my left when I walk in, and as I go in, he closed the door. So I couldn't, you know, just walk back out. I'm like, man, they said, make it, just, just sit down for a minute, just need to ask you some questions. So I'm just still standing up. I didn't sit down. I said, I'm gonna stand right here. But I shouldn't even open my mouth then. And I realized, I said, don't say nothing else. So I just stood there and they said, is your name Damian Porter? And I just looked at him. They said, were you on Abel Row in module 2600 on such and such date? and sell such and such. I just looked at him. Did you hear any commotion next door? Did you hear a fight? Who had a fight? What happened? I just looked at him. We're investigating a homicide that happened next door to you and we know that you heard something. And I just looked at them. I never answered any questions. I never confirmed even my name because I didn't want my name in any paperwork saying we talked to Damian Porter and he said, and then the paperwork cuts off after that. It just says, he said, you know, <laughs> they say, you know, my name is in something. I don't know nothing, even my damn name. 
And well, up until a tragic event, they had never filed charges on the home for this case. But something ended up happening with the homie when he got to prison. And some people speculate that these two incidents are connected. Well, I'm gonna eventually have to tell you what ended up happening to the homie when he got to prison. And it was very crazy. Some people have said that it's karma. I'll let you decide. But it was very tragic and devastating and sudden and unexpected. What ended up happening to the young homie involved in this incident when he got to prison. Devastating. I'll bring you that stone. Stay free, people.